In this video, we are going to talk about functions in Python. Functions, as we all know, is one of the most important construct within any programming language because they are the building blocks of the code and they are one of the important way that you can actually modularize your code or start to modularize your code instead of having them all running like this. So only once you invoke a function, it is going to run. And similarly, only if a function has something called as a return value, only then it is going to return a result for you. Unless until that, the function is going to be just running ideally without you being invoking that function or calling that function. And that's exactly the same idea in Python as well. And that's how the code will actually work in Python. So as you can see, we have so many cores in here. At the moment, we have talked about this variables, something like this, and we talked about conditions, and we talked about collections, and we talked about loopings within the collections, but we don't really have a modelization. I mean, I'm just telling it logically, right? But we don't really have a way that I can make this like a functions. So what if I just make them as a function, and then if I just try to execute the code and see how it actually works. So I'm just gonna add Python module or Python file. I'm telling module in here. You'll probably understand that later, but as of now, yes, this is Python function. So function example uh, dot pi, something like that. And I'm just gonna grab the whole code from here and then I'm just gonna paste this code over here and you'll understand why I'm actually doing this. So I'm just gonna leave this guy as of now and we're gonna deal from here. So these are the code that we discussed in our second video of this series. So I'm just gonna copy them and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a function this time. So creating a function in Python is super simple. All you're gonna do is you need to use a keyword called as def. So this def is the keyword to define a function. And there are different types of function available. One is the class method, one is static method, another one is the abstract method. So if I just create a class method, you can see that there is something called as a self here and there is a parameter list. I mean, don't worry about the self yet because we have not even talked about class. So this point, it is not gonna make any sense. So I'm just gonna remove this. And what is the other way? The static method. I mean, even for the static method, we don't have to worry because we don't, Every method that you see right now is gonna be kind of a static method because we are not even invoking them within a class and they are not even sitting within a class. So this doesn't make any sense as well. But there is one more way which is gonna be the abstract class. Even the abstract method is not gonna make any sense at the moment because we're not working with the classes. So the simplest form of the method which we are talking about is the normal function like this, like def and then you give the name of the function. So the name of the function, let's call this as variables example that we worked, or maybe just like variable. And then you can open parentheses and close the parentheses, something like this. And you can see that the color has changed to green. And because we don't really have a braces there, I'm just gonna put a colon. And once I hit enter, you can see that there is this indentation automatically coming in, which is the four spaces. And then you can just paste the block of code that we just copied. Uh, once you copy that, you can see that this actually the intendation goes wrong. You basically need to maintain this intendation for each and every line of code that you execute. If not, the code is not going to execute and it's going to work in a different way. So this is the method block basically. And this method actually has all this line of code that you are seeing over here, right? So if you execute this particular piece of code, this four lines, it is going to print a value for you. So probably what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna comment these codes that we wrote all these days. And now I'm just going to uh, run this line of code and we'll see what's gonna basically happen. Let me clear it. And let me also run this in the item terminal, which makes it even more clearer for you to look at. And we're gonna execute the function example.py. And if I execute this, you can see that it brings me up the hello world uh, Python like that and salary as this, right? Probably I'm gonna remove this type so that it's gonna be even more better to understand what we're really printing instead of the type there. I'm just gonna save it. And now if I execute this, you can see that hello world uh, Python Karthik and my salary is 900. So because we have written this as a variable, you can see that even though the code really exists, this code is not being executed because we have not even called this particular function within our code. So in order for doing that, I'm just gonna remove this line of code 
I'm just gonna save it. And now in order to invoke function that I have written, so if I type like variable like that, you can see that it's not even working. The reason being, you are actually calling this variable function before even declaring it. So you need to do something like this, and now you can see that the variable is coming in. It's not like the compiled programming language in like C Sharp or Java where you can call the function even before declaring it. But here you need to actually tell the program that you need to call this after declaring it in Python. If not, this is not gonna work. So the intelligence of Python is almost super awesome to tell us this particular difference for us. So now I've just called the variable here and now if I execute this code, you can see that it's gonna print the same value that we have actually typed in over here. Of course, there is this type. So probably if I just do something like this, it's gonna print. Uh, and now if I run this, you can see that, oops, you can see that it just prints me up pretty much exactly like how we did it. But yeah, this is the functions within the Python. And now we have actually printed the value within this particular function, right? So what if I want to print the value out from this particular variable? Let's say if I want to return a value out from a function and then I want to print that particular value later on instead of printing within this particular variable's uh, function. So in order for doing that, let's say I'm gonna choose some other code that we already wrote. For instance, this one, the configuration for the dictionary. So I'm just gonna uncomment this particular piece of code over here, something like this. And let's say if I want to put this whole value within a function and then print the value. And also this time, I'm also gonna show you how that we can pass a argument within a function as well, which is also very, very cool, right? Because without an argument within a function, it's like a nothing, right? So I'm just gonna say def, and I'm gonna say get dictionary uh, value, and then I'm just gonna pass in one of the dictionary value. Let's say I want to get the value of, uh, like browser or AUT or test or log from it. So I'm just gonna say value. Then I need to return the configuration value out from it. So I'm just gonna say configs dot get of the value which I'm actually gonna pass in. So maybe, or it's not value basically, it's a key, right? So we are passing the key and we're gonna get the value out from it. So I can just type like key and then I expect a value out from this particular dictionary. So instead of doing this kind of code that we already wrote over here, I'm just gonna probably remove them all. And if I want to print this particular value, so you can see that I'm using a return keyword, so which means it's gonna return a value out for me. And let's try to print this and see what's gonna be the result out of this particular function, like get a dictionary value. And I'm gonna give something like maybe a test. And I'm gonna save it. And if I run this particular code, uh, oops, I'm actually running the first.py. I probably can run this one over here. You can see that it runs me the smoke coming in, which is nothing but the test which I gave as smoke. And if I give like AUT, I'm gonna save this. And if I run it now, you can see that it runs me the Google site. So we also saw how we create a function, how we pass a parameter, and how we get a value out from a function using the return keyword. So this is how you can actually work with functions within Python. And this is exactly the same way how we work with other programming languages. If you have not worked with any programming language, this is super simple in Python. Just one keyword like def, and everything is gonna be happening for you magically. And this is really, really awesome. And similarly, you can pass any number of argument within the functions, pretty much like other programming language. This is one argument. If you want to pass other arguments like this, like key and is value, something like that. And you can keep adding the argument as much like how you want. And the code is gonna work pretty much exactly like how you can overload the method and all those stuff. So those things are also gonna work for you within Python. And there is one more way of working with Python's argument, which is nothing but the arbitrary arguments, where you're gonna pass the asterisk of any parameter name. Let's say something like this. So this way, what you're telling the code is, maybe you're gonna pass just one argument, or maybe you're gonna pass any number of arguments within it. So you don't really have to specify like only two arguments that you need to pass, but you can pass like three or four or five based on how many number you want to. And it just works 
pretty much exactly like how you want it to be working. So this is other way of working with it uh, within the arguments of the functions. And yes, these are how you can work with the arguments within the functions. And similarly, there is something called as a default parameters value, which is pretty much like how you do in C sharp, where you can pass the default argument, something like this, like, uh, for instance, in the key, it will always try to do something like log, something like that, or maybe browser. And even if you don't pass any value over here, let's say AUT, I'm just gonna do something like this, I'm gonna save it. And if I try to run this code, you can see that it's gonna bring you the opera. So even if you don't pass any parameter within this particular function, it's gonna execute it for you. So let's say if you pass anything like test or maybe AUT, and now if you run it, you can see that Google site is coming in. So if you pass any parameter, basically that's gonna be executed. If not, the default argument is gonna be executed. Yeah, so this is how you can work with functions within Python. In our next video, we'll start working with classes because as you can see, our code is getting very, very bigger. We have two files. Somehow we have to maintain our code in multiple classes. And that's exactly what in automation testing we will be doing with Selenium, like page object models or maintaining the properties and running the test, keeping the separate test, everything is gonna happen in classes. So classes is the next step. Meet you in our next video.